Hey everyone, Derek here. Welcome to the final part of this three-part series on building your color workflow in DaVinci Resolve. In part one, we set up color management. In part two, we built a node tree. In this video, we will be diving into the actual grade. As with part one and two, there are many methods to accomplish this, and I'll be showing you one common way to approach it that leaves you ways to customize it later and make it your own. This approach is often called the hero shot method, where you select a clip to be your primary image and then match the rest of the scene to it. Here are the steps. Find your hero shot for the scene. Next, make sure the hero shot is exposed well and balanced. Create your look. Apply the look to the rest of the scene. Match the other clips to the hero shot. Finally, sweeten your clips as needed. So let's get started. Here we have a small scene with six clips that we'll be working with. First things first, we want to go to our gallery, select all of our clips, and apply the grade from our node tree to all the clips. This way we'll have a consistent node tree that we can work on for each clip. Before we select our hero shot, I'm going to point out a couple things with the scopes. I like to use the parade scope and the vector scope. If you like to use other scopes, please do so. Two things that I find helpful to have turned on under settings are use display qualifier focus. When using the qualifier tool and you highlight part of the image, it will show down in the scopes what part you are hovering over. Another setting that I find helpful in the vector scope is to make sure show skin tone indicator is selected. This will give you a line for the approximate place where skin tone should land. So first we want to select our hero shot. Usually for your hero shot, you want to be close enough where you can see the subject's skin, but far enough away where you can see some of the environment that they're in as well. Moving through these, this has some harsh sunlight that we might have to work with, so that might not be a good candidate. This has some lens flare, could be a nice artistic shot, but maybe not good for a hero shot. This doesn't have faces in it, so we'll keep going. This one looks pretty good. We can see the skin and some of their surroundings. So let's start with this one. This will be our hero shot. So first we want to work on making sure the exposure and balance for this shot are where we want them. For exposure, we're going to be using our linear gain tool to photometrically adjust the exposure. This shot looks overexposed, so I'm going to start bringing it down. Put it probably about right there. For exposure, a good rule of thumb is to have your subject around middle gray. If the subject is slightly brighter, such as fair skin tones, it might be slightly above that, up to a stop. To measure that, we can take our qualifier and just hover above part of the skin that we want to measure. On our scopes, middle gray will be right around 40 IRE. So for this subject, we'd like it to be right around there or slightly above it. Lighter skin can sometimes be pushed even higher up to a stop above middle gray, which would be closer to 50 or 60. For this shot, I think this looks pretty good. We can check her skin as well, and that too is slightly above the 40 line, so that's pretty good. Next, let's look at balance. Click on our balance node, and again, we're using linear gain. For that, we'll turn to our vector scope to monitor where we're putting our balance. When looking at balance, it can be helpful to look at it at a photometric way concentrating on the green magenta axis, this way, and on a warm and cool axis, this way. So using the gain ball, I'll first address the skin tones on the green magenta axis and get it closer to the skin tone line. And then move between warmer and cooler to find the sweet spot where I feel good about the color separation of the shot. I think that looks pretty good right there. So we can check our skin tones. They are pretty much right in the middle of the skin tone line. And one other thing you can check for balance is how your neutrals are doing. It's not super important that neutrals appear neutral, unless that's something that you're going for. But I like to keep an eye on them to see how far I'm pushing them one way or another. One way we can do that is make sure our qualifier is selected. Right click on our viewer 
select show picker RGB value. And if whatever we hover over, we can see the RGB values. So if we hover over something that may be neutral, such as her black shirt, the value should be pretty close. These are pretty close. It's slightly cool, which I'm okay with for this shot, not too far away from neutral. So now that we have our hero shot selected, exposed well and balanced well, now it's time to set our look. To keep things simple, I'm just going to use um, built into resolve here, the film look creator, to give us a simple look for today. And I'm going to select Rochester for a Kodak inspired look. The black level is a little high and the highlights can get a little hot with this particular look, but I think it should work for today. I believe this is only available on the studio version. So if you only have the free version of Resolve, you won't have access to that. It's not necessary. You can build your look with other tools, but for simplicity's sake and to speed things up today, I'll be using that. So here's our hero shot with our look. I'm going to save a still. So we have something to compare it and match it to. So in our next step, we're going to copy our look to the other clips in the scene. Because this is only one node and it's a small number of clips, I'm just going to copy and paste to keep it simple for this video. So now that we have our look applied to the rest of our scene, we want to match the rest of the clips to our hero shot. There are a couple ways that you can approach this. One is going to your gallery and playing your still for your hero shot, selecting the clip that you want to match to. I like to have a full screen wipe, but you could do half and half if you want, or the various other options here. And you could wipe back and forth and try to match that way. Another option that I like to consider is to use this split screen option instead and choose selected clips and select your hero shot and the shot that you're going to match. That way they're both on the screen at the same time. I find this a little bit easier to work with. The downside is that your image is about half the size that it would be if you're working on it full screen. This is the method I tend to use more often, so I will start with that. So to match our next shot with our hero shot, first we're going to look at exposure. This image is slightly overexposed compared to the hero shot, so I'm going to pull that down until it looks close. Maybe about right there. Next I'll move to balance. Again, working on a green magenta axis focused on skin and then on a warm and cool axis. One other thing that can be helpful is that when using this selected clips split screen method, both images show up on the vector scope. So if you have the shot that you're trying to match and you move the gain ball so that the vector scope moves away, you can see the other image underneath. One good way to try to match those shots is to get that to overlap as much as possible. This can usually help you get pretty close and then you can tweak from there. I think that looks pretty close. The majority of your shot matching with color managed footage should be able to be done with exposure and balance. You may also want to keep an eye on your other primaries of contrast and saturation if you need to tweak those to get a closer match. So I'm going to keep moving on here to the next clip. Again, starting first with exposure. About right there. And then balance. Probably around right there. Moving back to our hero shot, then we're going to go to the shot before it. This looks like it is almost the identical shot, just at a different angle. So we're going to try copying and pasting our two adjustments from the previous one to see if that works, because often it does. This one's pretty close. It looks to be maybe just a tad warmer so we can cool it off just a little bit. 
Okay, I'm gonna keep going here just to the last two shots. This one's gonna take a little more work, I can tell, but let's dive in. With a shot with some flare like this, you have a little more flexibility, but it's, it also can be tricky to get both the high end and the low end to act the way you want. With exposure, I'm gonna try to get the subjects about in the same place. About right there. Let's check our parade and use the qualifier here. So the woman is a little below middle gray and the man is a little bit above middle gray. So decent spots for them both to be. I wanna do a little more work on this, but I'm gonna match balance first. So probably around right there. So with a shot like this, it's obviously lower contrast because of the lens flare going on. We can take away a little bit of that to match the rest of the scene, but I think it's also a good idea to keep some of that feel for the creative intent. We could try adding a little bit of contrast, but I think that would blow out the highlights even more. So for this shot, that might not work. Instead, something you can do is go to a secondary node and change this again to linear and use the offset control. This works similar to a flare control and we can use it just to drop down the bottom end just to get that a little closer without losing the feel of the shot. I feel like the highlights are a little hot as well so I'm gonna address those. There are many ways to bring highlights back down. Um, I'll show you one quick and easy way that can be helpful as long as you don't push it too far you can get pretty good results. On another secondary node here, we're going to go down to the HDR palette. With these zones, sometimes either highlight or specular will give you the area that you're looking for. You can click and hold on these and see what area is affected. So I think highlights is going to help us out here. So I will just pull down the exposure a little bit to bring some of the detail in the clouds back and to soften those highlights. I don't want to go too far, but right there might be okay. Let's do an on and off there. There's still a little harshness there, but much better than when we started, and I think good enough for our purposes right now. For our last shot here, do the same thing again. We're fix exposure and balance. Okay, about right there. And I like the overall exposure here. I don't bring the entire shot down, but her the exposure of her face is a little high still, so this is where we could use a window to bring that down. I'll change this to linear so I can use gain for exposure in the same way. Just bring it down a little bit. So let's take a look at all of our clips and see how they fit together. Looking pretty close. One thing that jumps out is our hero shot, I think looks just slightly more saturated than everything else. So I will go to our sat node and just pull it down a couple points for that one. Let's check again. I think that fits much better. One other thing that you may want to address is that uh, looks like the look pushed the sky a little more cyan in the hero shot than everywhere else. You could probably leave that as is if you wanted. If you want it to be a little more uniform, we can address that with the secondary. So in one of our secondary nodes, we'll go to the hue versus hue curve. I'm just going to click on the sky to get that selected. I'm going to drag these points out a little bit because that's a pretty narrow range to start with. I want to make sure this the hue is not rotated here. And then click on this one and we'll rotate it a little bit back towards primary blue. You can see the jacket is getting picked up a little bit, so we don't want to go too far. But it makes the sky a little closer to where the others are. 
if we were really worried about this blue here too, we could use a window to section this off. But I think for today, this will work well enough. So let's take another look here. Overall looks pretty good. One other thing that you might want to do and that we should mention are the trim nodes. You may look at your scene a little later and wish you would push things a little differently. So for example, you may look at this again and wish you went a little warmer with the balance. So let's use a trim node to do just that. Switch this to linear since we're doing balance and start pushing it a little warmer. And let's just go to an extreme so we can see exactly what that might look like when we ripple this out. And then to make these changes apply to the rest of the clips, we can simply just copy this trim node and then select the rest of the scene. Go to color, ripple node changes to selected clips. You see the effect went to the rest of the clips. And I will just undo that. And take one more look at our scene. And there we have it. This is where we started. And this is where we ended up. There are definitely some things you could nitpick for sure, but I think overall it's pretty good for a demonstration. Thanks for joining me for this series. Stay tuned for other videos on different topics. See you next time.